right, here we go. This is the first in a new series I'd like to call Talking About Records. You guessed it, I'm gonna talk about records. Today I'm gonna talk about my records. I might talk about records I have for sale. I might talk about records I don't even have. I might talk about your records. Maybe I'll bring some of you on talk about your, I have no idea. Uh, I said this is a series, I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna do one of these, five of these, 10 of these, maybe I'll just do them until I run out of ideas. Chances are, probably won't, because when it comes to records, there's um, there's a lot to talk about. So, um, the other thing is I had to figure out what to talk about for this first one. And one of the, the you know the things you get asked the most is what's your favorite record, which is really hard, because favorite is really subjective and it's really hard to pick a single record that's your favorite. Um, you also get asked a lot if you're a record collector, like what's your rarest record, which you can kind of determine. Um, so I'll probably, you know, do some of those in the future. But I would say the number one thing I get asked is like, what's your most valuable record, right? And that's one of the only things, at least it's not as subjective because you can use, you know, online as far as what records are valued at. Uh, Discog is kind of the uh, go-to resource these days. Um, you can also look at, you know, what records actually sell for. You can go to eBay sales and see what people are paying for records, that's usually the best gauge because a record's really only worth what someone will pay for it. Uh, I may pay, you know, 100 bucks for a record, which you could care less about and would only pay 10 bucks for, so to you it's worth a lot less. But uh, the value of records is highly, uh, you know, it can be debated, but so today I'm going to do uh, my top 10 most valuable records. So I printed out um, based on Discogs, right? Again, some people think Discogs isn't all that, um, but I think it has become the norm. And so if you don't use Discogs, which is short for discography, just go to discogs.com and you can uh, look up just about any record um, and see what the uh, kind of low, medium, high value is of that record is based on what it's sold for on the Discogs marketplace. Um, so that's what I'm going to go by. I'm going to, I'm going to base this list off of the median value. So you can sort it again, the low, medium and high values. I sorted mine on the median value and I'm going to do the top 10 in my collection, which is right here behind me. Um, there's a couple artists that repeat on this and you'll see a, a theme throughout. And if you know me, you won't be surprised, uh, but we're going to kick it off. So the number 10 most valuable record in my collection is... Smashing Pumpkin, Siamese Dream. It's an amazing album. Hopefully you're familiar with it. This is an original press in 1993. Um, I got this, um, I didn't get it in 1993. I probably got it in the early 2000s if I had to guess. Probably probably bought it online. I don't remember um, specifically buying this one at a, a record store. I'm usually pretty good about that. If I buy a record at a shop, especially if I'm out of town or something like that, I'll remember where I got it from. This one, pretty sure I got it online. This is, again, the 93 original press, and it is on uh, translucent, semi-translucent orange vinyl. It's kind of got a marble to it, actually. Um, they make a couple different colors of this. They make a one that's on, uh, they make a version that's on pink as well, I think. There may be some others, um, but it's a double LP. Uh, again, 1993 release. Smashing Pumpkins' second album, their first was Gish, and Siamese Dream, obviously, is when they really exploded. They were already on the scene with Gish, but, um, you know, Siamese Dream's where it took off with Today and Cherub Rock, everything that kind of blew up on MTV in the early days. So this one is pretty hard to find. Um, and again, the value, as I had to the value, $135 median value. Um, again, that's, you know, depending on the condition, depending on... Um, you know, where on the album, this, my copy is, is in pretty good shape. Corners have a tiny bit of wear, but that's being extremely picky. So overall, um, this is a great record. I love it. I have played it a ton, but have taken care of it. Um, the unique thing about this one and Smashing Pumpkins in general is that they have reissued Siamese Dream. Um, but for whatever reason, the, the more recent reissues in the last, I would say, five to seven years, they changed the, the album art. So the cover of the reissues is more of uh, it's completely orange and kind of purple and pink. And it's a cool looking cover, but 
it's not the original one. So if you want the actual, um, the original album art, you have to go back into the early 90s, 93. They did some reissues, I think up to 96, um, that weren't on color. There is a black vinyl version. It's kind of hard to tell. There's not a lot of distinction between if it's a color version or if it's a black vinyl version. Um, I've had both and really the only way is to open it up and see. Um, so if you want that original, uh, the original cover art, you kind of have to go back and, and pay a little bit to get it because the, again, the reissues, which are also not, I wouldn't call them rare, but they're, they're, they're not, they're not super common. The reissues go for, you know, maybe 40, $50 of Sunmi's Dream. Um, and they're nice and they have, I think they have extra tracks on and stuff. Um, but again, they're not the original cover art. So, uh, huge fan of this album, probably, um, definitely in my top you know, five or 10 favorite albums of the 90s, maybe even of all time, because it's that good. If you look into the recording process of this album and how Billy Corgan slaved over it and the hundreds, hundreds of guitar tracks that he layered to get the sounds on this record, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, I'm super glad that I bought this back in the day because, you know, again, 135 bucks now. You can find them, you know, 100 $150 range. I'm, I don't really see them much less than that. If I ever do, I'd buy it just because I know it's that collectible. And it's just uh, one of those pinnacle albums from the, uh, from the early 90s in the Pumpkins. Um, I mentioned, you know, about changing the, uh, the cover art, their follow-up to Sunny Dream, which was also a hugely popular album, uh, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, they did the same thing there. So the original, uh, original versions of Melancholy um, are even uh, much more valuable than this. I think they go for maybe four or 500, and I don't have one of those, unfortunately. Um, but they did the same thing. When they reissued it, they put it in a really nice box set, which I do have, um, and it's super cool. But again, they changed the artwork. They used kind of some, some of the, uh, the art from the, the inner packaging of Melancholy, and they moved that to the cover. And it's, again, it's a nice package, but just love having the original cover art because that's kind of what you remember back in the day when you first got the album. So. Um, I'm not sure why they chose to do that. Maybe they did it on purpose to really distinguish the early pressings, which is, uh, which is kind of cool, but it's also, you know, kind of sucks if you don't have that original pressing and want that original album art. So there you go. Number 10 is Siamese Dreams, Siamese Dream 1993 press, uh, by the Pumpkins. All right, moving along. Number nine has a medium value just above that 142 bucks. This is actually a 2010, it's about 10 years old. And it is Crowology by the Black Crows. Uh, the first of two Black Crows albums you're gonna see on this list. So Crowology, again, released in 2010. This is a triple LP. Um, I'm not positive. I know they haven't reissued it. I'm not positive, you know, a lot of times they don't tell you um, how many are pressed. That's something I wish was more, uh, was more common. On super limited edition albums, you might see like, you know, only 2,500 copies or something, but most records that come out, um, they don't tell you, um, which, so you don't really know. So this is a triple LP. I'm not going to take them out. It's a, it's a black, uh, they're all black, uh, and all similar in regards to the, uh, the packaging, but super cool artwork. Crows are absolutely one of my favorite bands. Uh, kind of one of those bands you love to hate. Um, as far as the, uh, the brothers are concerned, I've got a cool pop-up, which is, which is really kind of neat. Album art works great. This album is particularly cool because it's more or less a greatest hits. Um, but they re-recorded them all in a stripped down fashion. So if you're not familiar with Crowology, check it out because it's pretty much got all of the Crow's best songs on it. But again, they're all acoustically based. So... Um, you've got everything from their earlier records and some of their later records. I'm looking at the tra track listing and you can barely read on the back. This is actually the credits. Uh, it's because they got this crazy font, but it's got everything. It's got all their hits from, you know, the real popular stuff like She Talks to Angels, uh, you know, in the early days, um, hard to handle all that stuff. And then it's got some of their, in my opinion, their greatest stuff, which is off of Morica and off of Three Snakes, Southern Harmony, again, those early to mid nineties records, but then it does go all the way up to, uh, you know, to the, uh, the newer stuff, like before the frost and war pain and some of those. So it's a great, uh, great compilation. I guess you call it more or less a best of I'm kind of glad they didn't call it just, I'm kind of glad they didn't do the traditional, uh, greatest hits 
and they actually chose to re-record them uh, because some of these versions are some of my favorite versions of songs like Good Friday, uh, Wiser Time. They're just incredible versions. They uh, the, the Crows are absolutely a live band. So if you saw them in their heyday, which I didn't, I, unfortunately, I was stupid back in the you know mid 90s when they were super popular. I didn't see them. I've seen them lots in the uh, mid 2000s when they uh, regrouped a couple different times. But they're definitely a live band, and again, that's why I think this comes through, because most of this, I'm sure there are some overdubs on it, but most of it's recorded live, uh, and most of it's, again, stripped down the acoustic bass. So, Crowology, again, this is a medium value, uh, 142 bucks, uh, high value is 188 so, uh, you know, pretty pricey record, and I kind of don't think they'll repress this one. But I don't know. It's 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 really hard to tell. You never know these days with labels. Uh, with the Crows, I think by the time they got to this one, this is on their own record label, Silver Arrow Records, which is just the Crows. So um, that kind of is a little bit of a tip off because if, if this was like on a, a major record label, like a you know a Warner, a Universal, or whatever, they have more incentive to repress it to try and uh, you know try and recoup more of their costs and get more out of their legacy artists. But since this is since the Crows are pretty were, were at this point pretty much independent and you know still are and have been for years, um, you know I kind of doubt we'll see a reissue on them, especially because it's three LPs. It's an expensive one to produce. Um, when it came out, I don't I don't think it was like a fan club thing or anything. But I remember it being I jumped on it right away because I knew anything kind of Crows related goes fast and they usually don't press a ton of them. And uh, you know they have reissued all of their main albums uh, from you know the first record all the way up through the, the mid-90s stuff, like I already mentioned, Amorica and Three Snakes, they reissued all those, but this is one of the rare ones, again, came out 2010, way past their prime. So I don't know if we'll see it again. I kind of hope we do, just because that, that way more people will get their hands on it, but at the very least, go stream it, you know, check it out, it's an amazing record, and if you're not a Crows fan, this is the one I'd point you to. If you're not familiar with the Crows, I'd say go check out Crowology. It's kind of, again, it's a best of compilation, but some of the best versions. So that's Crows, that's number nine. Uh, all right, so number eight, I've actually got two albums at number eight. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but it's about to because they are both the same album but different versions. So Pearl Jam 10, uh, you know, came out in 1994, uh, median value around 150-ish. This is my original copy that I bought. I bought it uh, at Bill's Records. Um, Bill who just passed away recently. So I bought this at Bill's Records off uh, Spring, the original location, Spring Valley and Coit in 1994. So if you're familiar with Pearl Jam, uh, this was actually released in 91. Um, the reason why the original press is 94 is because they didn't press it on vinyl because Pearl Jam was completely unknown. And even for the first year, year and a half as a band, they were completely unknown until of course Nirvana hits. And then everyone knew who Pearl Jam was very quickly after that and they had been working. But, uh, so that's why it's a 94. So it came out the same day, um, same day as Vitology, I believe. Versus or Vitology, one of the other. But I remember going to Bill's and picking this up at the same time that that other one came out. Um, so love this record. Uh, I don't need to talk about the significance of it. Um, you know, if you're a Pearl Jam fan, it's highly touted as, you know, their best work. That's uh, highly debatable. If you're a huge Pearl Jam nut like I am, it's it's not their best work. It's an amazing debut album, but I would rank a few of uh, a few of their other albums above this one as far as my favorites are concerned. Um, but it's, you know, it's a pinnacle release. It's just, it's hard to, hard to beat that first album when you break onto the scene, especially for guys like, uh, you know, uh, Emmett and uh, Gossard who have been doing it for so long, um, you know, previously with Mother Love Bone, etc. So for them to break through on this record was amazing. So Pearl Jam 10, that's one of my prized possessions. I've had some other copies of it uh, in the past that I've had for sale, but uh, but I'll never sell this, sell this original one. That'll, that'll remain, remain with me until I'm gone. Um, the reason why I've got two versions is because this one, which is a reissue. So this is a 2014 reissue of 10. Um, and it is the uh, Newberry Comics uh, Coke Bottle Clear Vinyl. This one does tell you, limited, limited number edition of 2000. Uh, it's got a number here on the back. You probably won't be able to see it, but it's number 620. It's kind of gold stamped. This was an interesting one. I picked this up on a whim. It came out when, uh, when Pearl Jam remastered. Uh, remixed and remastered 10 and then they did box sets around 10 and also versus of Vitology. So this came out around the same time. I picked it up 
just by chance, not really thinking much of it. I have several versions of 10 already, like I mentioned, the box set version. So I've never opened this one. I've almost opened it several times and just held off because I don't need another version of spin of 10 to spin. I'll spin the original if I if I need to or one of my other reissues. Uh, but this one's got a medium value of 138 bucks or you know, uh, high value of $180. Had no idea. Uh, just kind of limited, so I'll probably hold on to this one. I, I very rarely keep my records sealed because I listen to my records, right? But this is one, again, where I had several versions of it already. And so it was funny when I sorted it, these two came up really close. I think they were one off as far as in my collection, as far as most value. So um, I thought I'd just do them together since it's the same record. Um, this is a remast uh, do, 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 LP2. So this has got the original version. So it's got the exact same version of this. And it's also got a second LP, which is the new mixes, which is, again, exactly what they did on the 10 box set, which I've got as well. I'll do that in a box set uh, video. For, but for right now, 10. There you go. So you've got the Newberry Comics and you got the original. All right. Now we're going to flip right back again to the Black Crows. Um, this is actually from 2019, the Tall Sessions. This is one that I don't know how, but it completely slipped under the radar on me. I've been huge into vinyl for years, but especially the last few years, and I have no idea how I missed this, that it was coming out. So when it was released, completely flew past me. I didn't even know about it until months later. I was pretty pissed off because it had already shot up in value. Again, they, I don't think they, uh, yeah, so this is a, they only pressed 1,000 of these. Something you probably can't see, but this is number 203 of 1,000. This is, again, another triple vinyl set. Um, it's just an incredible piece of artwork. The records, which I'm going to pull them all out because they're all just amazing. You've got splattered orange and green. Um, just really cool. So the Tall Sessions, um, I won't talk too long because I've already talked a bunch about Black Crows, but um, this was supposed to be the album that uh, was going to come out instead of Amorica. So they went into the studio um, and the, the, the story goes that Rich and Chris were obviously at odds at that point. And Rich would go in during the day and record a whole bunch of stuff. And then Chris would come in at night and erase all his stuff and re-record his own over it. And it was a huge mess. So there's tons of material from those sessions that they eventually completely scrapped and then re-recorded uh, Amorica, I believe. Um, and so all of that stuff came out on CD. Uh, it was called The Lost Crows. That, that CD came out, I, I'd have to look, but you know, maybe... 10 or 15 years ago, and I loved the CD. And then they finally decided to press it to vinyl and only press 1,000 of them. Um, and I just completely missed that announcement. So um, I missed it first time around, and now medium value is 150, the high value is 241. Um, you can find these, but you're not gonna pay less than 125 bucks for it. I actually picked mine up semi recently and it's actually got some wear on the top a little bit just from when it was because I when I, I got this it was sealed but again sometimes even when it's sealed it can have a little bit of wear and I opened it right up right away because again I play my records I'm not necessarily in it just to collect the majority of the time every now and then I'll keep something sealed so the tall sessions this is just uh, you know one of those releases for me because the crow I'm such a big fan of the crows that um, I wanted to make sure and have this in my collection. And I love the color variation. And I love the fact that they're all splattered and they all look very different. I guarantee you there's not, you know, no two of these look the same as with all splattered or kind of marbled vinyl when they start mixing colors together. Love the way those turn out. Um, this is, so again, this is B-side. So this has got, but that's one of my favorite songs. Another Roadside Tragedy is one of my favorite Crow songs on this. Um, it's got different versions of lots of the stuff off all the way back again from Amorca and then all the way up through By Your Side. So it's, it's an, again, another compilation, um, Curse of Diamond, uh, London P25, Wiser Time, Nonfiction, so Descending, again, it's got demo versions of a lot of those and then just different versions of tons of songs. So couldn't, couldn't speak highly enough about this one. But again, this is, this is in the weeds on the crows. Again, if you're not a super huge Crows fan, start with Crowology for sure. This is one you want to pick up later on as far as, uh, you know, in their catalog. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal record, especially in vinyl packaging. I absolutely love. All right, we're bouncing back and forth. 
All right, back to Pearl Jam. This one, live on two legs. They also released a live on 10 legs, uh, but this is the original one, live on two legs. 1998 um, compilation of live tracks from the Yield Tour. Uh, I saw them at Reunion, Reunion Arena on that tour. Love the Yield album. This is a median value of 170, goes up to 245. Um, love the packaging on this one's got a ton of great um, ton of great photos from the tour it's on black vinyl double black vinyl um, I love the sleeves because they've got the uh, got a bunch of their tour posters which um, are highly collectible as well everything Pearl Jam puts out is kind of highly collectible but love this record um, you know prior to this I don't think there was any other live shows on vinyl um, Plenty on CD and bootleg form. I remember going, speaking of Bill's records, I remember going to Bill's um, in the, the mid 90s when Pearl Jam was at their peak and paying, you know, 50, 75 dollars for a double CD bootleg of a live show from Europe or maybe even from the US because that was the only way you could hear the band, you know, unless they were on like Saturday Night Live or maybe a, something on, uh, you know, MTV or something. You couldn't see them live. Uh, and, and live is where they really shine. Live, you know, they did a bunch of cool covers. Um, you know, different snippets of songs worked into theirs, different kind of versions of their songs. Uh, and the energy was just great. So um, they, you know, they finally released a live one. Um, there was also a DVD from this tour, which uh, kind of their crew shot uh, via digital video uh, at that time when, you know, kind of digital video cameras were more, uh, you know, prevalent and you could get away with it from a quality standpoint. But this has got hits. Uh, you know, it's got stuff like Corduroy and Black and uh, Even Flow, but then it's got stuff in the Yield Tour too, which is great. Um, it's it's a mixed bag. You got Given to Fly, um, MSC, Do the Evolution, so a bunch of Yield tracks featured here. Great record. Had no idea when it came out this would be a valuable one. Um, they've never repressed this one. I don't know if they will. Um, they've reissued um, all their studio albums by now, uh, thankfully, because a lot of those were very valuable. Uh, original press or you know still are valuable but now you can at least get their studio album without having to go back to the reissues um so love live on uh, live on two legs great pearl jam live record all right staying with the theme uh mad season 95 so phenomenal record um kind of a sad record it was only released because lane staley uh was in a very bad place and ended up passing away um years years after this but uh he didn't record a lot after this um, features, uh, obviously, uh, aside from Lane Staley from Allison Change, you've got Mike McCready from Pearl Jam. You've all the, also got uh, Barrett Martin uh, from Screaming Trees, I believe. Uh, John Baker Saunders on bass and Barrett Martin on drums. Yeah, and then uh, Mark Lanigan from Screaming Trees as well, guests on vocals. So this is a medium value of 172, uh, all the way up to 400. Um, I pre I'm pretty sure that... Uh, a friend gave me this album actually I didn't pay for this one and I always remember that because of this corner cup because I think it was a, a record label promo from um, you know someone in the industry that worked for uh, worked for the label for Columbia or you know Sony owned by um, you know owned by Sony so great artwork this is the original press they have reissued this one uh, the 20th or 25th anniversary whatever it was of this record uh, but kind of like the pumpkins uh, they didn't do it with the original artwork. It's a black cover, and then the original artwork is real small in the middle as opposed to this full artwork, which this is all, uh, you know, uh, artwork that Lane Staley did, uh, which is really cool. So, again, if you want the original artwork, you got to find an original press. Um, uh, kind of interesting how uh, bands and or labels choose to do that, which is, again, it can be cool if you've got it, but it's annoying if you don't. So, Mad Season, 1995, that's number five. Uh, I'll stay right there. I will stay at 95 and I'll stay with Allison Chain. So this is self-titled, um, also known as Tripod or Three-Legged Dog. Um, I didn't know, I, I get, probably got this one in the early 2000s, had no idea it was going to be uh, super valuable. I think I got this one online as well. Love the artwork. This is kind of a weird record because, uh, again, Lane was in a really bad place. They had stopped touring. They didn't really support this record. Dirt was huge, and they toured like crazy. Dirt probably came out in 92, and then by 95, just a couple of years later, they had to record and release this one, but the band was kind of pretty much done at that point. They went on, they, you know, they did Unplugged, and uh, a couple of shows opening for Kiss at the very end, and that was about it. Uh, but this has got uh, Grind, Again, Heaven Beside You, uh, Over Now. Just an incredible record. You can get bootleg unofficial versions of this now, but they've never 
officially reissued it, which is just odd. I don't know why, because they've reissued Dirt, they've reissued Jar of Flies, but for some reason, uh, Facelift, uh, they've never reissued, and Self-Titled, they never reissued. So, the medium value on this is 210, high value 260. Again, just lucked into that one, I don't necessarily know, because even, uh, I, it's just because it hasn't been reissued, because there's, you can get an original, Original press of dirt um, or even facelift for you know 100 150 bucks, but this one uh, goes up beyond that. So that's uh, that's number four. Uh, number three changes gears a little bit. This is 2003 Queens of the Stone Age Songs for the Deaf. Uh, this is an original press on uh, on Ipecac Recordings. Um, I wasn't a huge Queens fan prior to this. I remember Rated R. I didn't know the self-titled record. I wasn't a big guy into Caius and, and those types of things. I've, I've since become to know those bands uh, and those albums. But when this one hit is when they really hit big. Uh, the single No One Knows came out. It was all over radio in 2003. I saw them on this tour. I saw them uh, at a club. I saw them at Ridgely Theater in Fort Worth. And I saw them, uh, I think, on the Lollapalooza tour, maybe, uh, with Audio Slave. So, um, love this record. Features Dave Grohl on drums. It's got Mark Lanigan all over it. Just a really heavy, heavy record, but great songwriting. Um, and if you're a Queens fan, this is this is a must. Uh, medium value on this one's two fifty. Goes up to uh, four hundred bucks, which is just crazy. Um, there's lots of unofficial versions of this one's out there, and then they finally just did reissue it in late 2019. So I've got several versions of this record. Um, this one, since it's kind of my original one and it's got some value behind it, I probably won't play it as much as some of the other uh, the versions I have, including the, the Vinyl Me Please repressing, which is a great pressing of this one. Um, so that's number three from 2003, Songs for the Deaf. All right, we are going to stay in 2003, back to Pearl Jam. See a theme here? I'm, uh, I'm pretty, pretty glad that I have continued to collect Pearl Jam over the years because I've gone up and down with a lot of other bands, just not been able to hang on and get all the releases, but Pearl Jam is one of those where I pretty much got everything. There's a couple here and there that I haven't snagged. Super happy I snagged this one. This is 2003's Lost Dogs. Uh, 370 medium value up to 450 high value, which is just crazy. This is kind of like the Crows LPs. This is a triple LP. It is a compilation of B sides and rarities. So it's got um, it's a triple LP black vinyl, uh, super cool artwork, which just features a lot of the you know kind of tapes goes back into their archives where they you know grabbed a lot of this stuff. Uh, I love the theme, Lost Dogs. In fact, on the back, the artwork is a, a bunch of posters of lost dogs like as if they're uh, you know looking for them so these are the songs that uh, got lost along the way if you will it's got stuff you you'll know uh, yellow lead better being a big one um, stuff that have has become famous amongst Pearl Jam fans or even passive fan last kiss honestly the biggest hit, hit ever believe it or not um, but then it's got stuff which I personally love like hard to imagine uh, wash uh, Dirty Frank, that's an early 10 B-side alone, an early 10 B-side. So it just got a mix of a mix of B-sides and rarities. It's got a couple covers on here, Leaving the Air, Grimmy Out of Control. Uh, so cool track list, really cool artwork, triple LP. Um, I kind of doubt, I'm just totally speculating, I kind of doubt they'll reissue this one. They've already gone back and kind of like Live on Two Legs, they've gone back and they've done the reissue campaign on all of their studio releases. But uh, I, I don't know if they'll ever reissue and there's a lot of packaging. Uh, it's three records, so it's a lot to go through. I mean, I have no doubt Pearl Jam fans would eat it up if they did reissue it. But uh, if I had to guess, I'd say you're probably out of luck on owning this one um, if you don't already have it, unless you're going to drop crazy money. I've never, I've never actually seen it for sale, um, other than online, of course. I've never seen it in a shop. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a, a four or five hundred dollar three LP set, which is just crazy. So I'm super glad I grabbed that one. Uh, Lost Dogs from 2003. That's number two. Last but not least, my number one most valuable record is Wildflowers by Tom Petty. Had no idea. I got this one. So this is this is one of my favorite Tom Petty albums. Absolutely. It's produced by Rick Rubin. Just some incredible tracks. Uh, you Don't Know How It Feels, You Wreck Me, um, Crawling Back to You, I Just Love, Wake Up Time I Love, Honey Bee, just amazing. So I love the record, which is why I bought it. Um, I didn't get it back in 1994 when it came out. I got it, again, probably early 2000s, uh, early to mid-2000s, if I had to say. 
Um, and I think I, I if, if I remember correctly, I paid like thirty forty dollars for it. So thank God I did it because the median value is four fifty. The high value is six seventy nine. It's crazy. Go go eBay. Go look it up on eBay right now. Tom Petty wildflowers, and you'll see that there's like sealed copies for fifteen hundred dollars. It's crazy. So. Um, you know, highly sought after record. They've never, they haven't re repressed it. They've re repressed and reissued all of his other records. For some reason, this one's the one they're holding out on, which is part of the allure. Um, supposedly they're going to reissue it. Rick Rubin has said there's a whole nother set of songs that this was supposed to be a double album. Um, and, uh, the label Warner just wanted to, uh, release a single album. And so there's a whole nother set of songs that are going to come out at some point when the lawyers are done figuring it out with his estate. Um, and I'm super excited to hear that. So I suspect there will be a, a big petty, uh, wildflowers reissue, probably a deluxe version. This original version is just on double black vinyl. Um, nothing incredibly, uh, special as far as that's concerned. It's got a simple lyric insert. Um, and the sleeve is nice. It's a kind of a cardboard S sleeve. It reminds me of, a of Mirrorball by Neil Young and Pearl Jam. It's got the same style of sleeve, uh, kind of a texture uh, sleeve. So it's got the lyric insert. So again, I don't know if it was just because they didn't press a lot of them in 94. Uh, they weren't pressing a ton of vinyl in 94, but I've got I've got plenty of stuff. So I don't know, it just flew under the radar. It was a pretty big hit for for Petty. I remember seeing him on this tour at uh, you know Starplex or whatever it's called. Uh, I remember seeing it with a bunch of buddies going to see this tour. Love the album um, and I'm excited to hear the rest of it. Um, there's unofficial versions you can get of it now, um, which is great because then at least you can experience on vinyl, at least close to the original sound. Um, but yeah, that's that's number one for me is Tom Buddy Wildflowers. Uh, luck of the draw, you never know what you're going to get. That's why you collect, right? Um, so that's uh, that's me talking about records. I'd love to hear you talk about records. Tell me, uh, tell me what you got in your collection, what's most valuable, what's most rare. Uh, you can do that probably in the comments down below if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or wherever it may be. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to keep talking about records if you keep listening. So uh, check back in. I'll have another uh, another version of this series. I don't know if I'll do, uh, you know, uh, feature some of my box sets or maybe something in a specific genre or albums from a certain year. Or I was thinking about doing uh, my favorite packaging or my favorite colored records. So I've got a bunch of ideas on I'm going to do this. Uh, I just like talking about records, so I figure I'd talk to you, and that way uh, uh, maybe you'll learn something, or maybe I'll learn something uh, as well. So really appreciate it, and we will, we'll see you on the next one.